Thank you, Renee. The key strategy to maximizing returns on bringing fat supplements into dairy rations rests on a single important decision. How much is the right amount to feed? Feed too little and you don't capture the full potential of the supplement. On the other hand, feed too much and you risk negative consequences that can wipe out most if not all the benefits. And I've tried to capture that concept in the graph shown here where I've related the percent added fat in the dairy TMR on the x-axis along the bottom versus the animal response on the y-axis. I've divided the graph into three parts. In phase one, this is uh, where we bringing in the fat brings in extra energy without negative consequences of the fat supplement. And so we get an increased animal response. The response might be milk yield or milk fat percent or even reproductive performance if we're looking at essential fatty acid. But let me use milk yield as a response. More energy, more milk yield. Now eventually you reach the point in phase two where negative consequences begin to enter into the picture, offset the extra energy, and the response levels off. Continue to feed the fat at even higher levels and you can get into phase three. Now the negative aspects of the fat supplement can supersede the additional energy and animal response or milk yield goes down. Perhaps even reaching the point where uh, milk yield is less or lower than a control diet when you didn't use it at all. And there are many examples of that in the literature where feeding a fat supplement at too high an amount reduced milk yield compared to control uh, with no added fat. So when you look at that curve and you ask the question, well, what is the right amount to feed then? Um, my views would be somewhere in this phase two where we're maximizing the animal response per unit of added fat. Now, unfortunately, this is not a single number that applies to all fat sources. While all fats have a curve like this, the actual level to hit that maximum response varies from fat source to fat source. So let's take a look at something like tallow that's more unsaturated still rumen active because it has the ability to, to impede rumen fermentation at some point. Uh, but I think it gives a wide phase two. Uh, a margin of safety is more forgiving to mistakes uh, because of its higher saturation. Uh, compared to something like <clears throat> soybean oil, shown here in the picture, that would have a more narrow phase two. Still a maximum response, but it's very, very easy to get into phase three where we have negative consequences. That would be true too, I think, for high fat byproducts like distiller's grain that would have a more narrow phase two. Uh, whole oil seeds present a special case. Um, you could think that the whole oil seed by nature of its hard outer seed coat would provide some protection from rumen consequences and would get back to this wider phase two like we saw for tallow. But process it, over process it, or the animal chews it extensively during rumination and now narrow the phase two again and once again have to be very, very careful not to tip over into that phase three level. So let me uh, throw out an example that was given to me several weeks ago. Uh, when someone called and said they had a client that could get a great deal on a bakery waste product, we knew it was high in fat, 42%, and wanted to feed as much as possible. In fact, they had already been feeding it for several weeks and were experiencing milk fat depression, uh, lowered intakes and lowered milk yields, but didn't want to back away from the product. Came to me asking, what level can we put this in there and um, stay away from problems and get some uh, advantage from the supplement. And uh, so I would turn around and ask each of you that tuned in today, what are you going to recommend feeding? What is the amount you would use? And most of us I know recognize that we can't, we can feed too much and we can't get too high 
or we run the risk of getting into problems. And that may tempt some of you to say, well, let's not take the risk, let's feed zero and stay away from it. But that's not an option here. Uh, the client has come to me and, um, and us asking, I want to feed this, it's a good deal for me. Um, let's bring some into the diet that we consider safe. These are some of the fat feeding recommendations that I've seen in print over the years. Um, They've been, they showed up in magazines or uh, trade articles or in different places, such as the first of these that says the absolute maximum should be 7% total fat in a dairy ration. So we, if we apply that to the bakery waste product, we'd be talking about 3.5 pounds. Now, I'm sure this recommendation didn't intend for all 7.5% to be the rumen active fat. Uh, but it doesn't distinguish or help us to decide how much that should be. The second of these is a little bit more specific. Limit rumen active fat to not more than 5% of the dry matter, and that would calculate out to be 2.5 pounds of the bakery waste. The next one, no more than 3% fat from oil seeds, distiller's grain, or liquid fat calculates to be 1.5 pounds of the bakery waste. So three recommendations and we got three radically different answers. The next one, avoid excessive levels of unsaturated fat, is certainly a true statement and valid, but very vague and doesn't do anything to help us decide what is excessive or even what is unsaturated. <clears throat> now the last of these I've heard more often than most of them limit total fat in the dairy TMR to no more than 7.5% of the dry matter, with one-third coming from the basal ingredients, one-third from rumen active, and the remaining third from rumen inert fat or bypass fats. And applying that to our bakery waste example, it would be one and a quarter pound. So all these recommendations have several things in common. First of all, even though they're giving a widespread in their recommendations, they are a single number. Most people are searching for a single level of recommendation that can apply to all fat sources. Uh, they're easier to calculate, easier to remember. Now the problem is that it treats all rumen active fat sources as though they were equal and they were the same. It doesn't distinguish between tallow versus soybean oil and there's certainly a difference uh, between how those two fat supplements can be brought into dairy TMR. So I would like to offer an alternative method for deciding on the right amount to feed. It's a simple four-step calculation process. It's based on the premise that cows have a maximum tolerance to fat. Part of this tolerance is set by metabolic limit. The total fat in the dairy TMR can exceed a certain amount that cows can handle. Now over the years different methods have been proposed to how to calculate that metabolic limit, but the one that I used is that the pounds of total fat intake by a dairy cow should be equal or not exceed the pounds of milk fat produced. So let's take a simple example where we have a cow at 100 pounds of milk per day and 3.5% fat then that cow should not have more total fatty acids than 3.5 pounds per day. Now this is coming from all sources. The basal ingredients plus the added fat supplements. And we should not downplay or ignore the contribution of the basal ingredients. For instance, here's some data that was published in the in the last uh, few months, comparing fatty acid contents in grass silage versus corn silage in a survey done in the Netherlands. The results here are expressed in grams per kilogram of dry matter. So for grass silage, uh, the mean or the average was 1.5%. Uh, grams per kilogram divided by 10, you get percent. 1.5%. That's a typical number most people would think of grass silage. And might appear in our feed libraries or our nutrition modeling programs. But look at the range from a half a percent 
to 2.78%. Corn silage averaging 1.61% and going from just under 1 to 3.5% fatty acid. So if you have this expressed as a total fat by ether extract, we'd be looking at numbers over 5% here. So big spread. And the more that's coming in from the basal means less should come in from added fat to conform to this metabolic limit. Now, the added fat supplements also have a rumen limit that must be adhered to. This would apply to the rumen active fats that I've talked about already, the tallows, the distiller's grain, the soybean oils, etc. And the thumb rule that I developed some years ago was that the percent limit on the rumen active fats as a percent of the feed dry matter could be estimated as four times the NDF content divided by UFA. I'm going to give you examples of these in just a minute, but I wanted to lay out the concept. The UFA is the unsaturated fatty acids in the fat source. So it's going to vary according to the composition of the fat source. And this is just the sum of the three major unsaturated fatty acids that the fat source brings. C18-1 or oleic acid, C18-2 or linoleic, plus C18-3, which is linolenic acid. All right. So let me apply this to the bakery waste example that um, we were talking about. And I need some herd information. And uh, we're going to feed this to a 90-pound herd at 3.7% fat. We need some diet information to apply my alternative method. This is the composition of the TMR expressed on a dry matter basis. And at 7.8 pounds of alfalfa silage, 16 and a half of corn silage, etc. Total dry matter intake is important at 49 pounds per day, dry matter. The composition of the diet, we need to know the NDF content which is 29.74. This is from running the TMR through CPM. And the fatty acid composition of the basal diet, and uh, CPM estimates that at 2.55. I could have it analyzed. I'd be better to do that. Uh, but CPM estimated 2.55%. So I have all the parts, all the information I need here shown on the right. How much are we going to feed? There's four simple steps. Number one, calculate the total fat intake. So this is simply 90 pounds of milk per day times the fat content, 0 0.037. And that calculates to be 3.33 pounds of total fatty acid intake from all sources. Now, the pounds of added fatty acid would be the total then minus the basal. The total we just calculated at 3.33. The basal is the 49 pounds of dry matter intake times the fatty acid in the basal dye, which CPM said was 2.55%. And if you do that math, you'll get 2.1. Okay. So 3.33 pounds is the metabolic limit so the added fats can be two pounds because the basil is taking out the rest, the other 1.33 pounds. Two pounds of added fat. Now, it can't be all this bakery waste, all bakery waste. We have to calculate how much of that can be bakery waste. So you just plug in uh, the information into this equation, four times the NDF, four times 29.7, times dry matter intake, 49, divided by the UFA is 85. Now, I got the UFA for the bakery waste by having it analyzed, times 100. And that will come out to be 0 0.68 pounds of fatty acid from the bakery waste. It's not pounds of bakery waste, but pounds of fatty acid coming from that fat source. The third step, the remainder then, what's left over out of the two pounds can be a rumen inert or bypass fat. 
So the pound of added fatty acid was 2.1 minus the pounds of fatty acid from the bakery waste, 0.68, and that leaves 1.42 pounds of fatty acids left over that can come from bypass fats. The last step then is to calculate the pounds of each. So the pound of bakery is the pound of bakery fatty acids, 0.68 times 100 divided by the fatty acid content of the bakery waste, 42, and that works out to be 1.62 pounds. Do the same for the bypass. Uh, 1.42 pounds of bypass fatty acid times 100 divided by the fatty acid in the supplement. And just for simplicity, let's just assume it's 100, just to make the math easier. And we have 1.42 pounds of bypass fat. So the answer we have then is this is the amount of bakery waste that is recommended to be fed to be in phase two, avoid uh, those negative uh, aspects and maximize the return from that uh, bakery waste. It's a safe level to use. The rest of it we can fill in from bypass fat up to that amount. Now rarely do we go that high because it's limited by cost and availability but the metabolic limit says we can go that high with bypass fat. Now I wanted to show how these can be adapted to a spreadsheet um, which I've done here. Uh, the spreadsheet, um, I have a table here that has <clears throat> typical or common fat sources we use in dairy TMRs. It shows our average UFAs. If you don't, it's better to have these analyzed, but uh, you can use the book value shown here or the fatty acids, uh, typical fatty acids in these fat sources. But the one we're dealing with the bakery waste, so that's down another, 85 UFA, 42% fatty acid. So you just fill in the herd information. 90 pounds of milk, 3.7 fat, 49 on dry matter intake. It does the rest of the calculations for you. You need to tell it to ration NDF down here. And in uh, just a minute or two, you get your answer of 1.63 pounds of bakery waste in this case and 1.42 pounds of a rumen inert fat, assuming it was 100% fatty acid. Uh, so the advantage of the spreadsheet is, uh, like I said, very, very quickly in just a minute or two, I can get some information from the consultant or the client about the composition of the fat supplement and specifics about the herd and the diet and give them a safe value to um, bring in their particular fat source into the diet. So uh, the main points that I wanted to bring across today was uh, to go over some current fat feeding guidelines that I hear, uh, which are single numbers, um, very simplistic to use, but I think are very vague and a little bit misleading in that they treat all rumen active fat sources the same. So I presented an alternative four-step method, easy calculations, for deciding on a proper or safe feeding rate for a fat supplement that adapts to the changes in the composition of the fat supplement and also adapts to changes in diet composition, specifically the MDF content. And then I showed you how these calculations can be easily automated in a spreadsheet so that you very, very quickly um, can uh, go through the calculations to come up with the answers for a recommended safe feeding rate for a particular fat source. So I'd like to end it here and once again thank Virtus for the opportunity to share my views and my thoughts on uh, this alternative method for calculating the proper feeding rate for fat supplements to use in dairy TMRs. And at this point, I'd like to turn it back over to Renee, and hopefully we have time for a question or two that uh, we could use for discussion.